Hey there, YouTubers! Uh, so as the title might suggest, I'm going to talk about heating pads and neck warmers in this video. And this isn't really necessarily a spinal cord injury thing or a wheelchair thing. It's more of a me thing um, because of the various surgeries I've had and all of the metal in my body. What happens is... Um, when it gets even remotely cold, and, and I'm talking like, let's say it's 70 degrees, if there's 70 degrees Fahrenheit, um, so if there's a even remotely, remotely cool breeze that hits the back of my neck or my, my upper back, um, I will have a stiff neck within an hour or two, and... Uh, what happens after that is, because my upper back muscles and neck muscles tense up, I get headaches. So, and the only way, and granted I can take Excedrin or Aleve to get rid of the headache, and typically it works, but until I actually get rid of the tightness in my muscles, the headaches will just come back after the medication wears off. So, in order to prevent that from happening in the first place, I, I like to wear something like this, a uh, neck warmer. In addition to a hoodie like this, because I need that much protection. So basically, go like this. And then there's extra protection with the hoodie so that, so that really nothing, because um, nothing can bother my neck and back because when uh, when there's sh strong breezes just the hoodie enough is or sorry just the hoodie alone is not enough I really need multiple layers meaning a t-shirt or even a long sleeve shirt underneath the hoodie and the neck warmer and then I'm usually alright so now uh, the reason I want to talk about heating pads is because uh, basically, the only way to get rid of the tightness in the muscles, you know, if I'm not able to pre prevent that from happening, is um, one of two things, or both things. Um, heating pad. I can lie on a heating pad, get my neck muscles warm and my upper back muscles warm, and typically um, a day or two of doing that and I'll be alright. Um... Also, massages really, really help, and both help even more. So, massage and uh, heating pad combination, uh, not really at the same time, although sometimes you can get a nice hot towel while you're getting a massage. Um, but that, those two things help the most in terms of getting rid of the problem. Like I said, the Aleve Excedrin will treat the symptom, um, but the actual problem, the only way to treat that is heat. Uh, sometimes a hot bath works also. Or, um, and, and massage. So, I just wanted to talk about, um, now, most, usually, uh, a, a moist heat is recommended. Um, uh, but I find that for me, I, I really like the dry heat better. Um, and this... You can see this is um, a very old heating pad. It's actually my parents um, from like the 1970s, late 1970s, mid late 1970s, possibly early 80s. Um, but th this particular product, oops, it's fallen all over the place. Uh, that particular product is not. Uh, made anymore. I don't think the company is even in business anymore. But there are similar ones that you can get um, at like Walmart, Target, or, or on Amazon, eBay, whatever. Um, and I noticed, because I did a little research before doing this video, but there are also, um, so it used to be there was wet heat, wet heat, or not wet heat, moist heat heating pads, and then dry heat heating pads. But apparently now there are some combinations, so you can get either, um, which is a, a nice feature. Um, so again, um, basically putting... So what I do is I, I put this on my bed, and 
go lie down on the heating pad, turn it up. What I usually do is um, I turn it up to high. So there's low, medium, and high. I turn it up to high, let it get nice and hot. Then I'll turn it off and lie on it for a while. And then when it starts getting cooler, I'll turn it back up to high and boost the heat up again. Um, of course, you don't want to spend too much time with the heating pad because then that can cause... Uh, that can cause some other issues. Um, and for me, especially, but I would imagine for other people that have, you know, metal hardware in them, it's, it's important to be careful during massages and before you go to, or rather, before you have a massage, you know, when you talk with, usually you'll talk with the person that's going to do it for you before, before you actually get down to doing the massage. Uh, and they'll ask you, you know, are there any places that are trouble spots? Uh, do you have any sensitive areas? Do you, um, and so it's important to say, if you have hardware in you, you have, like I always have to tell them I have metal rods attached to my spine, so you need to be careful of that and make sure, like I do like firm pressure, but it can't be so firm that it's going to cause a problem for them. Um, and usually that's not really an issue, but it's just, it's very, very, very extremely important to tell any massage therapist before. And uh, sometimes you'll get a massage therapist that has some training in terms of uh, physical therapy, and that's really great too because then they, they can recommend maybe even uh, exercises to prevent the tightness from happening in the first place and various things like that. Um, so anyway, uh, just to recap, in terms of keeping my neck and back warm, t-shirt or long undershirt, hoodie, also the neck warmer, um, and of course, you know, Basic, basically, I need to err on the side of being too cautious and too warm, because if I'm not warm enough, that's where the problems start. If I'm a little too warm, I can always be like, okay, I can put this down, but so many times I haven't had this up, or I haven't had the uh, neck warmer on, and then I regret it later. So I'd rather be a little bit too warm than not warm enough in terms of that. Um, and then the heating pad for treating it, and massage for treating it. Um, and that's about it. So, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Um, be sure to stay safe out there. And don't forget to subscribe. Oh, I almost forgot to say that. Alright, have a good one.